Hi everyone, we're back. Welcome to the Dreamers Edge podcast with... Oh, hi. I'm Eric. I'm a teacher and a sometime writer. Hi, my name is Yanis. I'm a subtitle editor and sometimes cocktail enthusiast. I'm Frank. I'm a librarian. I'm on my fifth or sixth beer, so if nothing of this makes sense, you will know why. I'm Chris. I'm also a subtitle editor, sometimes writer. And I'm Dimitri, webmaster at DreamResist.com, and uh, movie critic, intelligent critic for various sites, uh, DillyDoo.com, AskMan.com, blah, blah, blah. And actually, talking of sites, uh, you know what, Dennis, this is a great occasion to, you know, plug your site. Oh, jeez, thanks, Dimitri, that's yeah. great. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, which is probably the majority of humanity, uh, in my spare time, I'm a cocktail enthusiast and whiskey enthusiast. Unfortunately, for those who are chomping at the bit to get to my site, it is currently down. Um, the, uh, That's what she said. Sorry. Go on. And, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whiskey enthusiast. I did not know about your site. I'm listening to this. Very but um, we had a society. I had our, our first event uh, last year. It, it was a success, but due to SAQ red tape, uh, for those who don't know the SAQ, that's basically the government controlled liquor board. Uh, that government always getting in the way of people and living their lives. We decided to disband the, so uh, the society because we really can't offer anything uh, to members that they couldn't already achieve themselves. Having said that, I've now embarked on uh, my superhero career as a writer for uh, cocktails. And you can read my pieces monthly. So stay tuned, and I'll probably get a blog up and running soon, so you can catch my name on Google. Totally, looking forward to that. And also, well, we'll make sure to link it over at thedreamersedge.com. Great, that'd be awesome. All right, so we last uh, last time we were t we talked about random categories in the Oscars, and we're going to continue doing just that, starting with art direction. And our nominees are Avatar. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassum. Nine. Really? Okay. Sherlock Holmes and the Young Victoria. All I can say is I really don't know what art direction is. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, um, you know, if I had to go with something, it certainly wouldn't be Sherlock Holmes, which is probably the worst looking film I've seen for a long time. Agreed. Nine, Agreed. I'm going to say no to just on the strength of just that it's a musical. Um, and I'll go with Imaginarium just because um, I did enjoy what they finally came out with, and I don't want Avatar to win everything. I'd go for the young Victoria, just because Patrick Bermat, uh, he's a Quebecois, so... And he's also Patrice. Oh, Patrice, yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> 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 Patrice. Not suitable for work. So, Not Mr. Bermat, uh, no, but that's it. Uh, whenever there's a Quebecois that are nominated, I'm like, yeah, you go. Don't even need another name. Uh, I'm going to go with Young Victoria as well. I'm really big on Victorian pieces, and, well, you know, it doesn't get more Victorian than Queen Victoria. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Frank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Avatar to win everything, and I, I have a soft spot for period pieces, so Young Victoria. Moving on. Male actor in his world. Oh. Uh, we have Matt Damon in Invictus. Uh, and the clip they keep showing for that is possibly the most awkward moment in the movie, I think. But anyway, Woody Harrelson in The Messenger, Christopher Plummer in The Last Station, and Stanley Tucci in The Lovely Bones, and Christopher Waltz in Inglorious Bastards. Uh, I think Christopher Plummer's going to win it just because he's been around for a long time. I mean, he's a really he's a good actor. Well, personally, I think go. he should have won for, uh, was it The Insider? Oh, yeah, he was very good. Oh, right. It was an excellent role. Yeah. 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 That's and, a good point. Uh, but uh, I, I think he's going to win. But Christoph Waltz, Inglorious Bastard, uh, as much as uh, I really liked him. Oh, thought, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was so creepy at the same time, so intelligent, so with zero in right on the person. Actually, interestingly enough, Inglorious Bastard, like they always talk about him, that scene where he's drinking the milk with the other guy, but. Uh, the French actor that's in front of him, he was really good too. You saw all of his emotion on his face. Well, that's the thing with Tarantino movies, though. I've never seen a bad performance in a Tarantino movie. Yeah, very yeah. true. He controls yeah. his actors really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I think I'm just going to jump in there too, because yeah, I, I think, actually, I think Christoph Waltz will win it. Um, and I think he deserves it. Um, 
I don't know. A lot of people have said he's done something new and the fact that he's got all these languages and this and that. I think the idea of the effete Nazi is something we've seen before, but nonetheless, like just his performance is just spot on. It's creepy. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, you, you know, you're kind of brought along with him and you kind of, you want to be in the room with him every time he's talking. And mm -hmm. I don't like everything Tarantino does, um, but he knows how to cast. And this one, yeah. you know, I think he That's really true. nailed it. Um, Matt Damon, I'm just going to say quickly, I don't really understand why Invictus is getting the attention it's getting. Um, I think Matt Damon himself is actually a brilliant supporting actor. Um, I didn't quite see it right away, and certainly it's maybe overshadowed now with the whole board thing, but you look at Syriana and some of the other plays, uh, things he's done, yeah. I think he's really good. He doesn't really have much of a character in this part, though, yeah, you agree. know, and it's just like, I don't know why it's even there. Um, and the person who I don't think he's ever going to get another Oscar nod is Woody Harrelson. Um, you know, but he's actually quite good in The Messenger, and you know I'll give him the credit for that. But the person who's going to win it, um, and I'm worried that maybe Christopher Plummer is going to overshadow, um, but I, I think it'll be Christopher uh, Christoph Waltz. I think he's the one who deserves it. I think Christopher Plummer might steal it. I'm not sure. I think uh, Christopher Plummer was was excellent. Absolutely excellent in The Insider. I think he was phenomenally brilliant in Star Trek VI. Um, <laughs> no one, I mean... No, you didn't. The eye, patch, <laughs> the eye patch was bolted onto his skull. On that basis alone. I mean, he was snubbed that year as far as I'm concerned. But I will say this, Woody Harrelson, absolutely the only Oscar nod he will ever, ever Yet. I disagree with that. Oh, oh, go on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. Christoph Waltz, absolutely inglorious bastards. Um, Tarantino couldn't believe himself. Like he said, I'm writing this role. I don't think a human actor can pull it off. And then he found uh, Christoph Waltz, and he, he wanted he was, a Maggie. He was so <laughs> he was he was so blown away by how he was able to find an actor who was actually able to pull it off in a way that he even him couldn't believe it. Um, I will say this, if there's a sure thing, I think I think this is it. I think he absolutely will win the role. I agree. I'm 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 a hundred percent agreeing with that. It's Christoph Waltz's period. I, I yeah. And it's well deserved. And and I think one of the things that makes it so brilliant is that he didn't get caught up in the fact that his character was a Nazi. He played a sociopath, not a Nazi. And I think that's a brilliant decision that actors don't really make often when they play Nazis. The Nazi part of the character kind of overshadows everything else. Yeah. And like I thought Tom it was Cruise. brilliant. Hmm? <laughs> like Tom Cruise. He was yeah. in the German army. He wasn't a Nazi. Oh, well, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's true that Christoph Waltz has been getting a lot of attention, and uh, it's always refreshing to see that kind of portrayal in, in that specific period movie. But, you know, Christopher Plummer, you know, we were talking about The Insider before. That, that, that's a fabulous movie, and his role in it was, was We keep talking about The Insider, and no one's talked about The Last Station. Yeah, Has man. anyone actually seen it? I haven't seen it, but I will say this. Um, you know, he's getting on. I think he's going to get a call. I think he's going he's gonna to get it because of his, his work. His seniority. His life's work, yeah. Are you trying to avoid saying that he's going to get the Oscar because he's going to croak soon? Well, he's going to get the call before the line gets disconnected. <laughs> we laugh like super villains. Did you guys notice that? I just want to say, um, Stanley Tucci for the Lovely Bones. I found a weird choice. You know, if anything, I, I, I hate to say it, I haven't seen it. He plays mm. a serial killer, doesn't he? Well, if anything, Julian and Julia is probably better. Yes, I find than in this role. Yeah, you know? I, it and is. I found it a weird choice. It's almost like they need to give something to Peter Jackson. He's like, oh, too bad, guy. Hundred million dollar movie. You screwed oh, it up. That's a good point. I, I, th yeah. I think they went like, oh my god, Stanley Tucci is amazing and everything. We got to give him something. And they went like, what's the last movie he played? That's the one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, that's it. That's mm. exactly it. They don't necessarily award like the that performance, the best part. Yeah. They'll just be like, oh, you know what? He did all sorts of amazing things for his career. Well, a bit like we're what? talking about Christopher Plummer. Well, that's, what, that's what we're saying. Yeah. So I think it'll be like, oh, oh, he had a really good movie. It's pretty good. Oh, he He's pretty good in it. Okay. Yeah. Look, look, look at Denzel Washington. I mean, you know, like you know, th there is such a tradition as the apology to Oscar. It's like we didn't give it to you in the roles that you deserved, 
And it's like a Christopher Plummer. It's going to be like a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah, but well, the thing with uh, Denzel Washington, then, though, there was an extra factor. It was sort of like the new, the all new Halle Berry was going to get mm -hmm. it, yeah. and there was all that race to recognize better African American actors before she gets it. Yeah, I, I may be the odd man out on this, but I will say about Denzel Washington's role in that film. Uh, Which one? Training, Training Day. Day. Training Day. Thank you. Uh, okay. For the Antoine Foucault. I film. was disappointed by it. I mean, I thought, I thought, like, the I mean, film as a whole or his role. I was, I was disappointed by his performance. Performance in there, it was it was okay, but it wasn't great. See, again, yeah, I, I, I think I think I'm the odd man out. It was refreshing to see him yeah. uh, in that role, in the role of a villain, uh, because he before that he's never played the villain. You know, he's he's played a lot of stand up characters, uh, leadership roles, and to see him uh, transform himself. I mean, that was the film, right? Well, those performances start, were, you know, those he, he starts off were, as a leader. And then he slowly but surely throws. He the starts movie off becomes... as a leader, but even at the beginning, you realize that he's not on the up and up, as no. just as a function of his professional career. Right, he's an undercover drug agent, and obviously, you know, the film plays to that. But it was really surprising to see those monologues in, in the film that he was yeah, delivering. But it's, but it's also the way that he just looks at Ethan Hawke, and he's like, "I know, I know." And you get the other one, and it's like, wow, talk about a guy that can hit the mark just right. Yeah. It, it's a good performance. I don't think it's one of his great, uh, greatest performances. No, I don't think it's a performance that's nominated this year. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Sorry about that. Not like the insider. <laughs> Cinematography. Avatar, Harry Potter, and the Half Blood. Well, oh, really? Okay, Blood yeah, Prince. Why is that great? The Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, The White Ribbon. Hurt think, Locker for me. I don't want to get into the best picture conversation just yet, but let's just say that <clears throat> I'm not sure Hurt Locker is going to win, so I get the feeling that they're going to end up giving it to uh, Hurt Locker for cinematography. I think they're going to give it to Avatar, but uh, personally, I really yeah. enjoyed the cinematography of uh, Inglorious Bastard. Yeah, I, I actually loved it. I, I, I was going to jump in on that, and um, I thought the camera moved so well and yeah. it was so smooth, and uh, yeah, quite I think beautiful. Inglorious Bastards actually deserves to yeah. win this one. Um, now maybe I'm making it seem like I liked the movie more than I did, but um, but certainly the, the camera work on it mm. was was quite nice. It's just some of the colors in it really gorgeous. Do you guys think that a film like Avatar that's CG laden? Should even be in this type of. Well, that's what I was wondering. It's like yeah, putting up, it's like, putting an up, or yeah. You know. you know what though? It is the wave of the future, right? Like you know, like fifty years from now, we'll yeah, be in, we'll be point. into four D movies, but and the three D movies will be like the great classics. But I don't want to take anything movies away. Movies that travel from, through time. Yes. I, I I don't want to take anything away from from CGI uh, creative pictures because obviously up you know obviously conveys a lot of emotion, human emotion, and sometimes you forget you're watching a an animated feature. Yeah, and I wish I felt the same way about Avatar. Uh, <laughs> having said that, you know, when I think of cinematography, I, I think of photography. And something that's created on on a server or a team of servers sort of, you know, has nothing to do with photography. From my perspective, I think films like this, you know, don't belong in this category. They should belong in special effects. Or Do you think, though? Like, I mean, because there is something to say about a vision that you have and seriously like avatar i mean you know like knock it down as much as you want there is well when i think it, it vision, is doing things directed. it is doing things yeah. uh, that good that, point but still like i mean you know like cinematography just boils down to you know the look of the film the approach the, the camera work but but can i can, i just want to make a point here when you're dealing with traditional cinematography and i'm by no stretch uh cinematographer or even an amateur cinematographer so maybe i'm talking out of my ass um, but, um, you know, it's not hard to achieve your cinematographic effects when you have a room full of servers and all you can, all you need to do is throw money at the, in the room and buy tons of things that he did this something, he generate, did do something that no one's know, ever done before. I, I, fine. But what I'm saying is I think cinematography is really human driven. Now the argument can be where, where you know, where does the human drive and where does the machine, you know, begin? Maybe the argument can be made there, but for me, cinematography, it really has to do with human input and how, how the human eye perceives a landscape. And that's why I find it difficult for Avatar uh, to be in this category, as any other CGI-laden film.
that's a fair point, and it's certainly why I certainly wouldn't want Avatar to win it. Um, well, that and the fact that I got nauseous from watching it. But uh, I think it is going to get it, because I think Avatar is going to take every technical award. Mm. I really do. Um, you know, it's funny that the Hurt Locker is nominated there, because I sort of hated the cinematography in the Hurt Locker. I thought... I, I, first of all, the the camera kept moving like Bourne sequel style, mm -hmm. and it drove me absolutely mad. I mean, granted, she was doing it in purpose to give a sense of gritty reality kind of documentary style, so mm -hmm. it's not a criticism uh, of uh, uh, Catherine Bigelow's directing style and whoever did the cinematographer for it, which is Barry Aykroyd, but I sort of didn't like it. You know, <laughs> it's like pure and simple. Um, you know, if I, I had to pick a winner for myself, it would be... It wouldn't be Harry Potter and a Half a Blood Prince because that's another movie that, like Avatar, looks like a bloody cartoon to me. I mean, we're all we're all dumping on Avatar about it, but what is Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince doing yeah. there either? Jim Cameron did film, you know, digitally, you know, through motion capture, and you know, and, you know, it, it certainly isn't something like Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> no, I agree. You know, <laughs> that was not that point. <laughs> that point. What is <laughs> wrong with you? Come on, man! You guys haven't like. Play Fading Suns, the role-playing game. You guys can bring up Insider. I'm going to bring up Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> <laughs> I you think know, perhaps... Avatar is a film, you know what I mean? Like, and he did have a vision. He was able to actually, you know, from what I understand, from reading about it, like, he could see, when, as filming it, pretty much a version anyway, if, like, not maybe not the finalized version, but, you know, he could see through the motion capture. It would be translated into... Like a mock-up, anyway, of like the eventual, you know. So it wasn't just green screen uh, or blue screen or whatever. Like it, it is a, a generation above, you know what I mean. So there, there was a certain level of like physicality to the filming. Is my point? Yeah, fair point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. I still think Glorious Bastard uh, looked better. But... Yeah, I agree yeah. completely. <laughs> and that's true. I'm still going for it, but yeah. I don't think they'll they'll he'll win for it. You know? So writing original screenplay: The Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, The Messenger. A serious man. And up! I guess Mark Ball, uh, it's kind of hard to maybe take him out of, um, Catherine Bigelow out of this. Um, it seems like they really worked on it pretty closely. And I think now they're an item. So I don't know how much the story changed um, through the process. Um, I, I did think it was a really good story. I enjoyed it. Um, I think they deserve the nod. Um, the one that I think should actually win is one that I don't think will win. It's uh, The Messenger. I thought there was a lot of nuance to the story. Um, it's not a big blockbuster, it's certainly not a tentpole film, um, but in terms of small film, it hit all the marks. I suspect The Hurt Locker has certainly really big chances, but I think we're gonna, they're going to go for like the surprise, you know? And I think they're going to finally acknowledge Tantino's writing within Glorious Bastard. But didn't they already acknowledge it with uh, Pulp Fiction? Did they? Yeah, they won an Oscar. I, I agree with you. I think Inglorious Bastards going to win just because everybody always talks about like the Tarantino script. And you even have books that will be published of the script itself and people will buy it and everything else. So I think... Uh, yeah, but that's just because he's Tarantino. Yeah. But he's also a very talented writer. Yeah, I think, I think uh, he, he is. is. He the is. fact that we really can say Tarantino. Set a scene. <laughs> I think, I, I, oddly enough, I think it's going to be a struggle between Glorious Bastards and Up. I think um, the writing come like the writing isn't just about dialogue; it's also about what isn't said. Sometimes, I mean, everything we see on screen is really written down on a script, and I mean, it's conveyed a certain way. But seriously, yeah, that's some of the most amazing movies you'll ever see will be will include scenes in which there's no dialogue whatsoever, but all that writing, I mean, it all comes from the script. It really does, so... I guess I, I actually wonder, because um, some of the best scenes in Inglorious Bastards, you know, like, I wonder how thoroughly they were written and how much they were just kind of like the camera was running. Mm -hmm. They knew what they were going to do, but nonetheless, you know what I mean? Like, it's people playing games, it's a couple jokes and stuff like that, and like, was that line for line what Tarantino wrote? Because those were the best parts, mm -hmm. you know? Um, whereas Up, it's animated film, you know, like, everything said there is obviously scripted, I would imagine, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and you're right, Eric, uh, Tarantino won uh, Best Screenwriting for Pulp Fiction with Roger Avery. And, and I, I think, you know, Hurt Locker was a great story. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, 
but it would be interesting to see if uh, it took it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I predict Inglorious Bastard, but like you guys, I really would love Up to be acknowledged for its writing. It's such a beautiful story, and I'm really touched by it. Also, again, it's my second favorite movie of the year, so if I were just consistent. Which leads us to uh, writing adapted screenplay. Now, that's actually the category I'll be looking forward to uh, during the Oscar telecast. I really want to know who's going to win. And I really want to know why. District 9 is our first nominee. What is that <laughs> yeah. doing there? Uh, an education in the loop, uh, precious, based on the novel pushed by Sapphire, and up in the air. I, I District 9 is, is, is sort of the phantom hit. And I, I'll be quite honest with you, I think it's going to come down to a battle between District 9 and Up in the Air. District what? 9? What? No, 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 no. Are you serious? <laughs> no, District 9 is... I'm just going to ask, what's it adapted from? The yeah, short, it is adapted the, the from short movie? a short it, movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which was written by maybe the same guy, yeah, same yeah, people yeah. But, doing the same thing. But hey, longer. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> District 9 is an interesting movie. I don't think it has yeah. a shot to win in any way, shape, or form, but I think for some reason it's big enough that it overshadows every single other except up in the air. Really? Oh, oh my god. That's... Wow, Precious based on novel push, less good than District 9. You know? I think this one's going to be really tight because I think Precious is getting a lot of attention. I think it, yeah. it might win. Is it? Um, well, none that... Not for me. But... <laughs> Clearly. But the thing is, I think in education, I don't think it's going to win anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think it deserves to win here. I don't know if it's going to get it. You know, I find it really hard to actually predict what's going to happen in this one. You know, outside of knowing that District 9 is not going to win. I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm, pre I, I'm going to go out and say that. But um, if District 9 I would wins, really... you guys are all buying me around. <laughs> Fair I, enough. I yeah. would really like an education to win. I don't know if it's going to. Actually, I forgot that In the Loop is there, and actually, that's a brilliant screenplay. But, um, yeah. ah, that just throws everything off. <laughs> no, well, well, that's the thing. That's yeah. why it's the category I'm going to be looking forward to, because apart from District 9, Frank, all those nominees there, it's a really tight race, and they're all really interesting screenplays. For my money, I hope Up in the Air is going to win, and I'm going to put yeah. my prediction on it as well. That movie really, I thought, is one of the most important comedies of the decade. I yeah. really do feel that way. It's very apropos, yeah. It's very yeah. apropos. It's very. Uh, you know, it says all of the things that I wish uh, capitalism, a love story, had bothered exploring. I really want that script to win. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. Well, one script I'd like to. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I got the nod. Is in the loop because mm -hmm. I thought that was really funny and. Uh, just the pacing of it, everything else. I mean, Frank, District 9, come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it was a short story. It was a don't short movie. It was probably better as a short movie than having don't you understand? whatever I saw. They speak in South Africa. Ooh. Right off the bat. Oh, my God. I feel like somebody shot me in the knee, and I'm reeling from Frank's comment. Okay. Um, All right, it's okay. The District 9 that happens. No nomination. As much as you know, I was lukewarm to Avatar, to, to not nominate Avatar in this category and to nominate District 9 just seems a little awkward to me. As much as I you know, didn't find Avatar all that, the story was at least... But Avatar wasn't adapted. Well, yeah, it's adapted from Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Dance of the Wolves is a closer parallel to me than Pocahontas. Mind you, I haven't seen Pocahontas, but anyway. I mean, could it be that, that, that you know, we're at the point where Hollywood is so starving for some kind of sci-fi narrative that they had to throw this... Uh, I... Actually, that's a oh, sorry. No, but that's my question. Like, I, I and that's a great question, and I'm wondering suddenly if that not the district nine here and there because it was huge, hugely popular in the geek community. If it's not a kind of like we're sorry we didn't nominate Dark Knight for Best Picture. Well, yeah, for sure. That's that's yeah. that's what it was. But the thing is, when they opened up the not the Oscar list, you know what I mean. You would have thought it was going to be Star Trek who got in there, not District Nine. Good point. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's a good point. And, but know, the Star nerd Trek is like Star Trek. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, loyal Star Trek fans. I shall carry on the fire in the fight in so your sad. name. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it'll rain outside. And uh, you know what? Uh, that, that's one thing that Yanis, you brought up as well. Uh, when we brought up Avatar, it's worth noting that Avatar, who's 
one of the main contenders for Best Picture of the Year, I think. No nomination for screenplay. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting, because that's very rare. It's happened before, I think, with Gladiator. Where, uh, <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, yeah seriously. Geez. Oh, no, come on. The emotional arc of the main character from going from grim and gritty to grim and gritty. Wow! And he wants to be a farmer. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. It's like, no, we just took the first act of Ben-Hur. That's a script. But... <laughs> I just started screaming at the screen just uh, all the historical inaccuracies, but that's what a bachelor's in history will get you. Alrighty. Uh, are we already there? Film editing, we are already there. Avatar, District 9. See, that's fair enough. <laughs> the Herd Locker, Inglorious Bastards, Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. I think it would actually be Inglorious Bastards for me in this one. Mm -hmm. With Hurt Locker as maybe the, the more likely. I'm echoing exactly the same feelings. Uh, my personal favorite would be Inglorious Bastards. Film editing, often they do not acknowledge that not cutting is an editing choice. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Inglorious Bastards really shows you how well you can build tension by so doing just that, not cutting. But, yeah. but Hurt Locker seems to be uh, almost a shoe in at that point. Well, yeah. And I'm wondering, maybe Avatar is going to win, but I completely agree with you, Inglorious Bastard, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting sometimes not cutting on somebody's face and just letting them, and then mm. something comes out of it, and that's pretty interesting to yeah. see, and uh, there's moments, you know, you see Brad Pitt, and we talked about the scene at the beginning, like, just the tension, the milk scene, like, there, I mean, the tension itself, and you're just keeping on the face, and you read all of these emotions. Other films, other directors, they would cut it right there. And you wouldn't really get it. You'd get the voice, you know, and not seeing the reaction of the other person. So, I mean, personally, just that scene itself, I think it was worth the Oscar. I think Avatar is going to win it. Uh, but I'm definitely agreeing with Eric in terms of Glorious Bastards. To me, the cafe scene um, was absolutely phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. Again, oh, yeah, not a lot good. of cutting there, but yeah. you know. Yeah, that's the thing with Inglorious Bastards, though, because you named the cafe, cafe scene as your favorite scene. Everybody has a different favorite scene in that movie because yeah. they're all amazing, amazing yeah. scenes. And they're like yeah. short films. Yeah. yeah, you know, they're just mm -hmm. they're nuggets. You know, they're just nicely polished. And I think he he wrote the story also over like ten years or something like that. Mm -hmm. and it so almost we feels a lot like of movies that have been written for ten years. Yeah, it's about true. That was the same way, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this one, you really feel like, okay, he's done this chapter, and then he's kind of put it away, and, yeah. you know, and then he's kind of like taken it out of the, you know, it doesn't always fit perfectly, you know what I mean? But it's just, each of those segments is just so well-crafted. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, you know, like the fast cuts and stuff like that, I mean, that's been done before, and we've seen some really great work. And uh, because I think uh, Inglorious Bastards may not get the nod in other categories, definitely deserve Alrighty then, it's time for Best Director. Will James Cameron for Avatar be once again king of the world? Yeah. Will Catherine Bigelow, his ex-wife, win for The Hurt Locker? Will Quentin Tarantino finally get a, acknowledged as a director for Inglorious Bastards? Will Lee Daniels get it for Precious based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire by, for choosing not to edit down the title? And will Jason Reitman get it for Up in the Air? I think it's time for a uh, woman director to win for making an action picture which seriously drives up the adrenaline. Like, it's, 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 it's high time. And James Cameron himself has actually said, I hope my ex-wife wins. He didn't say, I hope you give it to her, uh, <clears throat> which sound, would sound slightly condescending, but, like, you know, women, women in Hollywood have to direct romantic comedies right now, and it's, it's high time that we get a different perspective, and I think that she did an awesome job with the Hurt Locker, so mm -hmm. absolutely. I hope she wins, and I think she'll win. Yeah, I completely agree with Frank. How does the the ballot system work? You know, from what I understand, everyone puts in their list of names. If there's not right away like a, a clear consensus, then it goes around to the second, and it goes around to the third, you know? Yeah. So there's sometimes a surprise in terms of who we get. Right. That's and right. as a result, I think everyone thinks Bigelow's going to get it. And I certainly think there's going to be a lot of politics in the voting. You know, there's going to, there's certainly a lot of female members of the Academy who probably really wanted it, to get it. Right. But at the same time, James Cameron gave jobs to a whole lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> and as a result, I think that might stick up. 
Yeah. Uh, a little bit higher, even though I don't necessarily think but he's, he's going to win. He's very vocal about the fact that he wants his wife to win. No, but Chris has a point. Yeah. I don't. You know what I mean? Like I think it's just the, the function of the the uh, you know I guess the economics of the way the way it works. I have a feeling he might win it. Um, and if he doesn't, you know what I mean? Then I, then I think it might be big, big low. You know, I think she certainly deserves it. You know what I mean? Like this is you know. Um, but I have a feeling Cameron might end up getting it just because there's a lot of people who kind of need to thank him. Yeah, because <laughs> and there's like 10 years of investment in this film. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they're a member of the academies who have friends and families and colleagues in, in the business, and you're right. I think that's a, that's a very good point. No, I, I think Avatar is going to win it. Um, I still think the directing of Inglorious Bastard was really good. Yeah. Uh, I really think uh, Tarantino is a very talented uh, director, not just a uh, talented uh, scriptwriter. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to be his time yet for uh, to to get the Oscar. Uh, you know, like we were saying before, like uh, sometimes they give a lot of apologies. Oscar, like Martin Scorsese. Oh yeah, that I was mean, a, that was on. the most obvious one. Yeah, exactly. But Raging Bull, my yeah. Raging that deserves an Oscar right yeah. there. Yeah, uh, Goodfellas. Johnny they Clark did the is. same thing with John Wayne when they found out he had cancer. It's like, hey, let's yeah. give him a lifetime achievement award yes. while yeah. he's still alive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. point. And he, since Tarantino takes such a long time in between making movies, maybe they'll feel that, hey, might be our chance. <laughs> 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 um, I, yeah, no, but I, I have to agree with Frank about uh, Catherine Bigelow's role. Mm -hmm. Personally, though, Jason Reitman, okay, if you look at the best supporting actors, uh, two of the female supporting actors... Uh, are from his movie and in a male actor well the third star of his movie is nominated maybe maybe that's a sign that the director is doing an bang up <laughs> job if he can get all those performances nominated like that mm -hmm. and I mean I've yet to see Jason Reitman make a movie that doesn't just engage me and make me crazy about it so. yeah that's a good point yeah no he's great he is great this is why we have to limit the number of movies that are nominated to five. Well, since you're segueing us like a pro, why don't you go ahead, Frank? Okay. Best picture. Avatar, The Blind Side, District 9. Yay. No, I'm joking. An Education, The Hurt Locker, Inglorious, ba Inglorious Bastards. Precious, based on a novel pushed by Sapphire. That's a, that's a mouthful. A Serious Man, Up and Then Up in the Air. Okay, the bottom line is is this. Okay, and I'm pretty much I'm pretty much sure that that my views hold up to Oscar history. In Oscar history, there the, the the pattern basically breaks down like this. There's the heavyweight in the nominations. Then there's the contender who, you know, has a good shot at maybe pulling an upset. And then there's a black horse, which is number three, which is you know the sort of like maybe maybe that movie will come out and snatch a Oscar in, in this, you know, crazy sort of like, it happens sometime. And then there's number four and five, who people sort of like, well, it was a really, really good movie and we'll nominate it, but really, does it have a chance? No, it doesn't. So what they've done, you know, is essentially, instead of having the pattern which they've had for a long time, which is, you know, the contender, the heavyweight, and the Black Horse, and then the last two movies and the that have tree. no chance to win whatsoever. <laughs> we'll have a heavyweight, a contender, a Black Horse, and then seven movies that have no chance to win. What the hell are they doing? My theory is that ABC is trying to make the Oscar telecast as boring as humanly possible. After outdoing themselves last year with like a speech for every nominee, that was just such a big... Yeah. suck up fest yeah. they went like how can we beat that in the boredom factor and they went like oh I know we are gonna have to summarize 10 freaking movies throughout the telecast I have no understanding of why they extended this category because all you're doing at the end of the day is <clears throat> you're just making more people disappointed you're, you're, you're telling more people with their movies or whatever it's like you know your movie's really nice. We're going to pretend for a little while that you actually have a shot. Seriously, boil it down to five. I mean, I think they can boil it down to five yeah, in a year. Even if you're nominated, I mean, it's good publicity for that film, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. which is the other argument. Second life. It, it's the other so argument that they're... I, I could see them where they're like, hey, why don't you nominate more? We'll get more people to go see our films just because 
oh, it's the award show. We need to see, oh, yeah, what are the movies that are nominated? It, it's and the, you see it on the weekend. Like, you see people like, why don't we go see the Oscar films? Come on, like, we'll go out. And that's exactly why they did it. That's yeah. exactly. Perfect, exactly. And it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. it does. It, it's the industry argument, right? We need more money. So, hey, yeah. look, here's a movie you should see. That being said, Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker, you're Herd calling Hurt Locker. Locker. I, I want Hurt Locker to win. You said you had a black horse. You had a... A, a heavyweight. A, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Which are There's they? the heavyweight, which is number one. There's the contender, which but is number which two. Which movies are they this year? Okay, very good question. Well, it boils down to Avatar, Blindside, and Glorious Bastards. So Avatar is the heavyweight. Blindside is the contender. Uh, sorry, Hurt Locker. Blindside? Did I say just blind? You said Blindside. <laughs> oh! Let's just rewind that bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Avatar is the heavyweight. Blind. Hurt Locker as the contender and Glorious Bastards as the Black Horse. Okay. And everybody else will not win ever. What amuses me about it is that if you look at the other nomination, especially in the big categories, you can tell wh which are the real five nominees. Yeah. It's Avatar... It's The Hurt Locker, mm -hmm. It's Inglorious Bastards, It's Precious, mm -hmm. and Up in the Air. That said, if anything's going to win Best Picture, it'd kind of be nice to have an upset and get up in yeah. as the other animated film, <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> and actually get an animated film with the Best Picture, that would be pretty good. I really like it. I think it really... It's a full movie. It's... The spectacle, it's emotional, it's imaginative to a level that a lot of these films aren't, you know. Um, some of them are gritty, some of them are this, some of them are slice of life, you know what I mean? But if I think of cinema, I want to go to actually the th something I go to the theater and kind of lose myself. Yeah. yeah something like that. You, know? yeah. you wouldn't see it, you, you can read it in a book, it's not the same thing. Like, a movie is the perfect way to tell that story. All these films are, are or of the five major films that are in this category. I mean, are all worthy films, and, and, and but um, the issue I have with them is that they're all human experiences that we've had before, and will have again in terms of you know the, the content and story and narrative. Um, I think, however, uh, up you know this year when when I think of a film that really blew me away, I mean. It was really up in its mm -hmm. simplicity. It's, I mean, it just it did everything right, and it's so nice to see that particular medium, medium, the animation yeah. medium, really break ground. I mean, in, in terms of emotion, narrative, and so I, I, yeah, I think that would be an amazing thing for it. But you know, Hurt Locker was an excellent film. I think Avatar is going to win for what uh, I'm going to dub the uh, the Dark Knight apology. Although, The Blind Side is the movie that's going to change America. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt Locker, which has probably got... I think it's earned as much as Avatar spent on its probably coffee catering. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I think it's amazing that it's on the same list. You know? Yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's just... Agreed. But the thing is, the Oscar nods usually do go to the big I draw, mean, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what it comes down to. So, you know, I think Dimitri makes a lot of sense, I think. I think Avatar will win. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Avatar, you know, everybody's hitched their wagon to the Avatar star. And I think that it's doing a lot for the industry and will do a lot in terms of where it's at the bar. Mm -hmm. So for it not to get the award would seem kind of strange. That's an amazing mixed metaphor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, folks. And that's it for our Oscar special. If you have any comments or predictions of your own, please post a comment at thedreamersedge.com or mail us at mail at thedreamersedge.com. Bye-bye. I think The Dark Knight was such a big phenomenon. All the moviegoers and the nerds are going like, it got robbed. Yeah. You know, Slumdog Millionaire, which was a terrific film, but I didn't see because it doesn't have a cape in yeah, it. What they should have really done for that movie is nominate Heath Ledger for the Joker role and give him in the Oscar. Which they, lost him in which, they, which which they've done once before. I'm sorry, but they did it for Network. Which they did. They did. He which, won Best Supporting Role. Okay, we'll take that last bit out. <laughs>